Hello guys, let's continue our uh, topic on vectors and vector addition. Now let's learn the third method of vector addition and that is component method. Are you guys ready? This is a little bit of a challenge. It will challenge your brain cells. So to all those uh, students who want challenge, this is the time to do this uh, lesson. So all my psychology students, prepare your brain cells. <laughs> okay, let's do this. What if you move in a two dimension? Let's say we have an example here. If you have a car that moves to the right, it's easy to analyze the quantities, the distance traveled, the displacement to the right, right? If it moves along the, let's say, the y-axis, like that, you see it, like that, it's also one dimension. But what if the car, which is most of the case in real life, this is what happens. The car moves like in 2D. If the car moves in 2D, then you have to represent the motion of this car, okay? And uh, to make it simpler, let's analyze the motion by not the curve, but just a straight line, but along the X and along the Y. So let's analyze the motion of this car, straight line, like that. Okay, let me share now my notes. Okay, so we have a graph here to analyze the motion of the car in 2D. That is along the X and along the Y axis. So the car moves in a straight line. Let's draw the vector displacement like this from the origin. So it moves in that direction. So this is your, let's call it, let's say, let's call it vector A, okay? Let's call it vector A. So this vector A can be represented along its X axis and along its Y axis, along the X part, along the Y part. So that is what we call its components. You have the X component and you have the Y component. So let me draw the X and Y component. So if you get to look at this, you can actually trace this line and this line and look at its projection along the x and y projection what i mean is just like a shadow like i have a shadow here look at my shadow at the back i have a shadow here it's the projection so if you get to like analyze these kinds of motion similar to a shadow a projection that's what you will see in the x and y axis so i have projection of shadows here okay so look, look at our uh, notes so this is your let me draw let make let make let's make this uh you know big, bigger or thicker so this is our vector and these are its component uh, vectors projection along the x and projection along the y so you can draw this so this is your x component and this is your Oops, Y component. So you can call this as AX. Oops, just give me a moment. AX, and this is your AY. So these are the X and Y component. Now, what are the equations that relates X component, Y component, and the A, the magnitude of A? Okay, so what are those equations? So if you're going to recall your trigonometry, your Sokatoa, your Soka or Toa, you can actually equate these uh, projections, these x and y and the magnitude. So let's remember uh, Soka and Toa. Let's start with Ka. Ka is cosine Ka. Adjacent Ka. Hypotenuse. So if you get to look at this triangle, and then let's say you have an angle here, theta. Let me use a different color. 
So we have the theta there. Okay. Um, with respect to that theta, your adjacent is actually your AX. And then your opposite is actually this one, which is equal to AY on the other side. So it's it's the same. It's the same as your AY. So this is your AY. And uh, this one is also your AX. It's the same. Okay. So you can actually relate this AX, AY, and A using trigonometric relations. Let's start with Ka. Ka is cosine theta equals Ka, adjacent over hypotenuse. In this case, the adjacent is AX, right? Ka, AX over your hypotenuse is actually the, the, the magnitude of your vector A. So, hypotenuse is actually your A. Okay? So, now, we, we, are, we can now relate the angle, the X component, and the magnitude A. How about the Y component? So, you can also do the same. Let's say you have sine theta equals A, Y. Why is it a y? Opposite. So, so, so is opposite over hypotenuse. And in this case, our hypotenuse is your a. So see, these equations did not just arrive from somewhere. It just came from trigonometry. And you know your trigonometric relations. This is easy, right? <laughs> okay. So if you get to manipulate the equation, your ax, let's start with a cosine. Your ax is actually equal to a times cosine theta. I just move cross multiply. So uh, AX is equal to A cosine theta. And then your sine, you have your AY is equal to A sine theta. Okay? And also remember, you can actually relate A, AY, and AX. Right? Recall your, recall this. Pythagorean theorem, right? You have the, the hypotenuse C, the A, the, the B. And in, in Pythagorean theorem, it says that it states that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And so as with this right triangle now. So here your hypotenuse C is actually your A, right? So you can say A equals or A squared equals your oh no, uh, capital A, your hypotenuse, your A. Your small a is actually your ax squared plus ay squared. So this is just Pythagorean theorem. And if you want to determine the magnitude, then you get the square root. a is equal to the square root of ax squared plus ay squared. Okay? And how about the angle? You can also relate the angle. And that is your TOA. Remember Toa, tan, tan, yeah, tangent. I think I don't have enough uh, space here. So let me make it smaller or bigger. So, okay, let me write a line. I will fit it here. Tangent theta Toa equals Toa, opposite over adjacent. Your opposite is your AY over adjacent um ax yeah okay and later on if you are asked to look for the angle then you get the inverse tangent so to determine the angle that's equal to inverse tangent tan to the negative one absolute value ay over ax okay so these are the equations that relates the, the vector to its component vectors okay you can pause this video if you want to uh, review or take a take note or a screenshot. You can pause that and we'll proceed with another example of vector. So now I have another, another example. I have here vector B. And uh, vector B is somewhere on the north, somewhere on the west. So if we're going to look at that here... We can actually put some direction here. This is going north. 
this is going west and this is going east and this is going south so our vector now vector b is somewhere on the second uh, second quadrant of your cartesian coordinates okay so it's along the north it's along the west so let's analyze the the, the x and y component of vector b so what is the x component let me draw a line oops okay So basically, this is your bx, the x component. Again, it's like a shadow of, of vector b along the x-axis. And this is like your y component, a projection along the y-axis. So what do you think will be the equations? It's the same. It's the same as these, but we're using a different symbol. This is vector b. So just look at that. We have cosine. Okay, let me write it. Uh, cosine, or perhaps I can use a smaller font. I might need a bigger space later. So you have cosine theta equals co, co or opposite, which is uh, here the opposite. You can use this angle. Opposite is your by. This is your by. It's the same as the other on the other side. And this is your bx. It's the same. It's just a shadow. It's just a projection. So it should have the same value. So cosine opposite. Uh, B, right? Oh, no, no. Cosine is, oh, oh. a ka, ka, ka. Sorry. Ka is ka adjacent. So adjacent here is the bx. Over the hypotenuse here. What is our hypotenuse here? Should be the b, right? This is the hypotenuse, ka, hypotenuse. Okay, and then you can manipulate the equation, so you can have a, like cross multiply, b cosine theta equals bx, but of course we usually write an equation, the bx should be on the left side, the standard form, bx equals b cosine theta, it's the same. And then for the y component, uh, sine, so, so opposite over hypotenuse now the opposite here is your b y right equals uh, b y over b and then so your b y should be b, 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 a b sine theta so it's the same look at that it's the same just use a different symbol and now for the magnitude of a with res with uh, respect to ax and ay we have, we have the same equation, so b should have a value of bx squared plus by squared. And so the angle, tangent theta equals absolute value, by over bx. Okay? So same, right? It's the same. We, just, we, use, we use a different symbol because we're dealing with two different vectors. One is vector A and one is vector C. Okay, so let us now discuss the steps in solving vector problems using component method. So now these are the steps in solving for the resultant vector. I will just uh, read and uh, we will have an example perhaps in the next video because this video is taking too long already. So the first step, if you have uh, vectors, let's say you have two or more vectors, first you have to resolve each given vectors to its component. So if you have vector A, you have to determine the AX, you have to determine the AY. Okay, you resolve each given vectors to each components, the X component, the Y component, or the horizontal component, vertical component, so here, let's say you have vector A. The X component is AX, A, cosine theta. The Y component is AY equals A sine theta. Okay, that's the first step. And uh, if you have vector B, then you do the same. BX equals B cosine theta. BY equals B sine theta. Perhaps you can take note of this slide or screenshot or list 
put it in your notebook. But here we have a reference. The angles that we are going to use, whether vector A or B, should be in reference to the positive x axis or on the first quadrant. Okay, the angle should be with respect to the to this line, the x axis. Okay, I will emphasize this later if we we're, we so we're solving already the sample problems. Okay. So that's the first step. Resolve everything to its part. Resolve A to its AX and then to AY. And then the next step is actually compute for the total X, all the X's and all the Y's. Okay? X's and Y. So remember the step two. X's and Y's. <laughs> I'm not going to sing. Okay? So this is what we did in, in this table. Once you did step one, AX, BX, CX, and so on, add all the Xs, AX, BX, plus CX, and so on. And then, of course, the Y component, AY, BY, CY, and so on, add all the Ys, okay? And you'll get the result later on. So this is the second step. Add all the Xs, add all the Ys. And then the last step, the third step, is solve for the resultant and the final direction. So once you determine these summation of x and summation of y, use the resultant equation. And that is r is equal to the square root of summation of x, this one, squared, remember, plus summation of y, squared, that's the resultant. And then how about the direction, the angle? So use that. The theta equals inverse tangent of summation of y over summation of x. So those are the steps in solving uh, vector problems using component method. So take, a, take note of this. I will see you in the next video for some uh, sample problems. Okay? See you in the next video.